Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. And keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence. Put in the work for yourself and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we are on Friday, January 12th. We're going to take a look at Lucid today. So Lucid is just a shockingly wild, wildly horrific uh, <laughs> chart at the moment. I mean, you know, you look back here. I mean, you can see the swings. You can see the call outs on the, on the Weeble app here of where the levels were. And uh, today we find ourselves down pressing under $3. For a period of time today so i thought we'd come in and take a look and just sort of <laughs> try to see where things are set as far as the chart goes now when something is under this level of distress as as far as the price and, and the the chart goes there's to me the only real clear path to redemption of some sort <laughs> is uh you know the the sentiment of the shareholders and the potential buyers and sellers. Something has to happen here that dramatically changes the overall sentiment in the stock. To me, this is not just sort of like a one-off catalyst, you know, like, hey, if we get an increased uh, slew of analysts increasing their price targets um, or throwing out some some buy ratings, or if there's, you know, one good piece of news from a, a big new contract or something, you know, it could break this downtrend resistance. And, you know, maybe that could sort of at least get us out of this downward spiral. To me, this spiral is so prolonged and so intense that there has to be something just sort of like fundamental that improves for a lengthy and sustained and, and just at the core for a period of time the sentiment of p potential buyers and investors and um, and that sort of thing. And, and, and short of that, I mean, being where it is, I don't quite know how Lucid gets out of this hole. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not going to talk about catalysts and news items and financials and all that stuff, but take any combination of all of those things and more and come up with your own sort of series of events that could take place that would potentially fulfill something that looked like uh, a dramatically improved sentiment from, from the public around the stock. Um, so that said, the chart as it stands, we're down here in no man's land. So when we flip over to the think or swim study, because we have this dynamic channel, that will help us more than these static levels and trend lines that don't adjust with the price action because there just isn't anything to adjust to, right? Our levels that we have way up here um, in the high threes, you know, it's way, way, way far away from that at the moment. And even this downtrend resistance that we had called out, I mean, it's just peeled down so intensely and so quickly that it's just, it has extreme uh, distance from that at the moment as well. So if we just hide these for the moment, take a look at the EMAs, see what that looks like. So you do see it sort of more uh, like closely following the downturn of the eight EMA here. See the unraveling, right? These had sort of, I guess we back up a little bit caught under this whole wave of EMAs for a long time, came up, tried to push, right? And all that it did for that moment was a little bit of a bullish crossover here, but it mostly just jumbled the EMAs together, which can be fine, which can give the price an opportunity to consolidate and stabilize before trending or going counter trend. Now, it was pretty brief, right? It bunched these EMAs up for a few days and then they just started to unravel and they're still gaining more and more distance away from each other for the time being, which just means that, you know, like you saw down here, um, you know, eventually they'll drag the EMAs down where they are sort of like inevitably going to collide with the price action. But that's a losing endeavor if you're a lucid bull is you don't want the price to be dragging the EMAs down so that they can collide with them. You want the price to be rising up <laughs> in order to cause that collision to happen. So in any case, it's causing the EMAs to be spread out quite far away from each other, um, you know, relative to what was happening back here. And the price 
itself is now so far away from even the nearest in EMA being the eight. So just a you know, pretty rough uh, position for the moment on, on the Lucid chart here. And we pop these back in and flip over to the think or swim side of things. Now we do have a trigger and fire on the TTM squeeze indicator, right? You had this lengthy trigger, and this is the setup that I prefer. This is my preferred setup. Stock, the stock price is pinned to the mid-range of the channel. While it's pinned, the TTM squeeze indicator starts to trigger. That's exactly what we saw here. And then what do we see? Before it fired, we got a counter trend move, pushed up, tested the upper bound of the channel, still triggering down here, came down, retested the mid-range. That's about where it threw this like one hiccup fire candle. And then as it was pinning again to the mid-range of the channel, then it started to fire, and then the real move came. So counter trend move while it was still triggering, and then the rest of the trigger played out, and then fire, and it is still picking up steam per the histogram on the TTM squeeze indicator with bearish momentum just picking up, picking up. Now it is putting in its second or third, depending on how you want to call, um, sort of categorize it, candle outside of the lower bound of the channel. Eventually, we look for any stock that leaves the channel to the upper or the lower bound to eventually sort of re-engage with the channel, and then eventually, eventually, press again the mid-range of the channel, and we look to see what it does at both of those key moments. It's a key moment when it first makes contact with the channel, because the question is, is it going to push off and use the channel itself as a resistance? Not a great sign if you're a bull. Uh, is it going to come up to the wave cloud, this red wave cloud, and use that as resistance? Also, typically not a great sign as if you're a bull. Um, or does it come in, get the gusto to press the mid-range? And if so, what does it do? Here it obviously shrugged off. It had some more bearish momentum to play out. It did that. And then we got into that time period that we just spoke about where we were pressing the mid-range while it was triggering. And then the fire putting in, you know, great call out, honestly, by the TTM squeeze indicator, which is not always the case. So to me, we're still off in no man's land, but at least we know on this setup that we're outside of the channel. And so we can at least look for what happens when it starts to engage with the channel again. Does it use this lower bound as resistance? Does it get some motion in the channel? And if so, does it use this wave cut as resistance? To me, those are often signs, not always, but often signs that there's additional bearish momentum that will need to be exhausted before any thing can sort of stabilize or get further motion into the channel. So does it do that? Or does it actually get the push into the channel and engage with this bright blue line, the mid-range of the channel? And again, if so, what does it do? Does it start to move sideways? And if it does, TTM squeeze indicator, does that start doing anything? Is it able to get any motion up over the mid-range of the channel? Does it just reject right off of that and then just sort of you know, lose further price action by bouncing between the lower bound and, and the mid-range of the channel? You know, Those are the questions. But at least here it gives us probably a sooner opportunity to see what it does, what the price action does when it, when it engages at a critical point versus over here on the Weeble side of things where, again, we're just sort of in no man's land. We don't have enough price action to put in um, to me, like confident support and resistance levels here, maybe here at about 360. But even then, that's really thin. I'm basing that off of basically two candles. Um, and so, and by the time it gets there, you know, it's going to have to work through this trend line and stuff. So it's potentially not going to engage with any meaningful levels on the Weeble chart prior to it engaging with this channel on the Thinkorswim study. So at least it gives us a chance probably sooner to see what does it do when it hits a critical area in its or a critical span in its in its life cycle, if you will. Um, so yeah, so right now it's just like I say, it's uh, it's sort of shockingly uh, in no man's land, and I don't know when it will stop, when it will stabilize, if it will reverse, or when it will reverse. But that's what I'm looking for at the moment: is when it re-engages with this channel. What is the first thing that happens? Does it get in there or does it immediately find resistance and how does it act? But uh, yeah, it's uh, you're really left uh, sort of, what is it, up the creek without a paddle, down the creek without a paddle? We're, we're in some direction of the creek, uh, but we certainly do not have a paddle, I'll tell you that. 
All right, folks, I hope that your trading week has been going well. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next video.